Welcome to Wise Beyond Bitcoin, where you come for education, analysis, and opportunities in blockchain and crypto. My name is Lucas. And my name is Ryan. And today we've got a little bit of analysis, education from our mistakes, and a macro view. We really want to get back into uh, the, the fun of looking at the overall picture and where crypto fits in to the, to the market economy at large. So we're going to just uh, share our perspective overall and how maybe that can help protect you and why they say taking profit, when is a good time to take profit? And we're going to kind of go into that. So if you'd like to learn about that, you know what to do, hit the thumbs up, subscribe button, notification bell. This is a two-part series. So we're going to do another video after this to go into detail of some ideas of some possible um, hedges in, in different places. None of it is financial advice. It's all conceptual. We cannot really take in all the, the dynamic growth that's out there. There are projects we don't know about. There are great opportunities. So if you know of one, drop it in the comments. However, we do like to share our research. This is entertainment, educational information, and we, we share what we can with you as we understand it. So if you like that, we appreciate your support. Uh, with that being said, let's talk about a few, of, like we said, a perfect storm of events, where we're at in the world, where we're at in the overall market, what time of year. And Right. And yeah, there's a few things playing out right now. And I'm sure anybody who's watching the markets are seeing there's been um, a, a week or so, week and a half of, you know, some sell offs, a little bit of a sell off pressure. A bear market is uh, not I would, this isn't a bear market by any means, but but it, the question is on the table. Are we entering a bear market and or will the, the will, will the bull market continue, you know, into the next year? That's that's kind of a big question. And I think you know, our, our take on this is like you said, we don't, we don't have, you know, we're not, we're not giving financial advice. So don't, don't just listen to us and just run off whatever we say, do your own research. But, but from our experience, these sorts of dips, you call it, we could call it a dip. These sorts of dips don't tend to just stop, right? Like when, when, when you start to see 20, 30% corrections in it, well, we can talk about Bitcoin. We talk about crypto in general. But when you start seeing these corrections play out and start start to occur, the thinking is always, oh, okay, is it is um, is this going to just be a dip? And you know, should I just buy the dip? And, and we're going to just continue the next the rally, you know, in a few days, or is this the start of of a real bear market? And our hunch is that these sorts of 20, 30 percent dips don't just end and just we and we just continue. Now that can happen, and it's no, it's not, it's not a question if it doesn't it never happens that way. Of course it can, but there's three kind of over, overarching, you know, concerns that are that we th feel like kind of mitigates against this being like a, a bull market returning in the next few weeks or months or month or so, you know, week or two out. So what are the three things? What are the three headwinds? The first one is it's the holiday season and people tend to spend money on gifts and, you know, perhaps vacations or whatever, you know. So there's a t tendency for stocks and financial markets, including crypto, to kind of dip during the holidays. And so that's there's that happening. There's also the the um, the new the narrative of Omicron, the pan, uh, the uh, COVID variant that's that was discovered only a few days ago, a week ago or so, I think in South Africa, and it's now you know it's it's threatening to be another you know, another, um, another moment in the pandemic where we potentially, who knows what will happen, you know, other nations are, are already shutting down and there are concerns that this is going to be a problem here. So it's just, it's a threat, right? We don't know where it's going, but it's, it's definitely a threat on the horizon. And if it, and if the future looks like the recent past could be bad for the economy in the short term, near to short term. And we know that what, how the economy, macro economy, stock market, financial markets, how that goes, so goes crypto, right? That's, that's, that's a, an, an unstated thesis that we're not, well, we, I'm going to state it now. <laughs> it has been unstated to this moment, but I'm going to come out and state it now that the, that the health of the, of the mainstream legacy market, the stock market is it, in the crypto markets are tied together, sure. right? That you're not going to see, we're not going to see the, the, the Dow and the S&P and the NASDAQ um, correct in a significant way. 
without crypto doing something similar, right? And so to put it in, about, go ahead. The o Omicron, uh, that new thing, it's already, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know that much about it, but you just type it in and look all over the world, they're shutting down borders, increase their, so the narrative is already there. And while it hasn't rippled out into the into other countries like the US and other places as much, it's starting to ramp up, okay? And that right. we know how that affects markets and the economy at large. So we've got that, we've got uh, holiday shopping, which is right around the corner. Um, and and then there was another article. I mean, just another nice. idea that you, we were going to bring up, and that's the uh, the Fed, the actions of the central bank, and right. you know what's going to what's what's going on with the rates. Yeah. Okay. So um, well, we are in a moment where everybody knows that inflation has become a bit of a problem, and this is after I think almost a decade of just increasing the supply of money and credit in the economy by massive amounts monthly purchases of assets in the billions and it's taken a decade to turn that deflationary pressure of the housing crisis housing pop the housing bubble collapse into an inflationary environment and it's, and it's taken a long time but there's they printed enough money to do so so we're at that point right the peter shifts and the ron pauls of the world were worried about this 10 years ago but now we're at the point they were fearing uh fearing of and what that, that what that means is is that the Fed's going to have to reverse get, reverse uh, course, and they are already announcing that they are doing so, and they're announcing that they're going to do so in a way that's even stronger and more um, deliberate than what was before. They're and that's connected to the fact they're realizing that the inflation problem isn't going to be transitory, and it is actually something based in the fundamentals of the monetary policy that they've pursued. So the idea is okay. We have to unwind that. That means raising interest rates. That means um, reducing the monthly bond purchases and essentially means reducing the amount of money and credit that flows through the economy. And that's that's necessary because you can't the Fed, the central banks kind of like a uh, like the gas. They're like the gas and the and the um, brake on a car. You can't just jump on the gas and definitely you're going to end up running off the road. You know, brakes are important. It might not be fun. It's, it's fine. It's fun going fast, but but not getting in a wreck is important too. So brakes are important. Central bank is about to press the bank, the brakes. And if the crypto markets are connected to the mainstream financial markets, and if this taper process um, dampens those markets, it's going to dampen all markets, right? And so you kind of have, we, we just throwing that out there as another, another part of the narrative that suggests that maybe a risk off path is, is the one to take now, right? Absolutely. And you look at now. Let's look at the crypto market, which we 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 have more videos coming up. If you like those, we really like to look at uh, different projects that have potential for great growth and long term value. And that's where we like to just kind of scour over the chains, layer ones and layer twos, and see what's out there and experiment. So we've got some fun and exciting videos to share with you on some neat neat um, opportunities, possibly. But uh, that being said, um, look at the crypto market and, you know, innovation comes in waves, right? And there's been a lot of great innovative protocols built on Avalanche, Ethereum, Harmony One. We, we start, you know, we start looking at it, these um, NFTs and these play to earn games in ways that you can make DeFi to strengthen the protocols and bring liquidity. You can make it more interactive and more rewarding for those who are more engaged and um, with a better ui right a user interface a, a more fun easy to understand your user interface if you were to say to someone you know two years ago hey it's really or a year ago hey it's really easy all you need is to get this token and equal amount of that token 50 50 and provide liquidity on an AMM decentralized exchange, you can earn fees and then you can farm that. And they're just like, what are you talking about? You're speaking another language already, right? Yeah. But when you get to play a game and you have a character and the character you know, uh, goes over here to, to farm and plant a seed, that becomes easy. And you start, and you start having real um, easy adoption it lowers the barrier to entry to where it doesn't have to be so technical and yet they're still accomplishing 
the exact same thing through their smart contracts. So right. that we look at NFTs, we look at DeFi, we look at the the DAOs, the the that um, oh the well, reserve currency DAOs that are so popular right now. Yes, and 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 what they have brought to the stablecoin. Uh, conundrum or narrative that in, engagement and and to liquidity to the liquidity conundrum as yeah. well so how that plays out and that's been exciting and interesting and and there's other development as well but let's take a look at um for example let's take a look for example at one of the premium top protocols uh one of one that we go into all the time so avalanche yes actually Pardon me, I'm clicking on it. Let's look at the uh, the blockchain, the ecosystem, right? Yes, let's do that. Just as an example. And we can just kind of get an idea of what's the top projects on blockchain right now or on Avalanche right now. It, now, okay. So the idea is that it looks, if it may, if it looks bad, well, things in crypto, this is just the beginning. Potential, what we're saying is it could get, we could be looking at, a little season of a crypto winter right now, but we're still seeing another correction where projects go down easily another 50% or in altcoins. We're talking about that in, in Bitcoin, right? In Ethereum, close to another 50% correction. In altcoins, you could still see another 80, 70%, 80% correction, just like the good old days. I mean, sure. The avalanche go back down to. Uh, 30 bucks. 20 to $30 sounds cr low, but remembering where it was just a, a couple of years ago, two years ago. And remembering how crypto loves to retrace. Crypto and, and markets love to retrace, but markets that, love to retrace. Even yeah. if it does that, it's still healthy and, and great. Mm -hmm. So, in, in, in my perspective, from my opinion, this is a great time. To look at where you're at in projects and say, do, am I all in or do I have enough off the table in stable coins? And we, we've got enough, we'll do another follow up video on, on ways, different ways you can, because um, there are many ways you can diversify and hedge, not just one. And just ask yourself, am I ready to ride out the storm? Because absolutely, whatever you have in, you should be able to be ready to ride out, ride out the storm yeah. and watch it go down and not uh, be dependent upon any kind of profits or, or success. And I guess the mental calculus is always, well, I, I could have sold into stable coins, you know, a few days ago before this dip happened. And then I would have had, you know, 30% more. Right. And, and, but so I don't want to do it because I'm not, because I missed out on that moment. But the, but the thing is, is that, yeah, that's, that's true. You did, but, but what if it went another 30% or 40 or, you know, whatever. Right. So why is the idea is, is that, yeah, you, you might not have cashed out at the very best possible moment to get the entire gain of the fall. Right. No, you didn't, but don't be, but no one's going to do that. Right. Cause nobody has a window into the future or very few people are going to be lucky enough to catch that. So the idea is, is that it sometimes it makes sense to watch the move and then react afterwards because you know future moves are going to come in the same direction and if you can get out from those that's enough of a win right so you see you know you maybe you've seen crypto markets sell off for the last few days and you think well i don't want to sell now because i could have sold a week ago but yeah but it's but this isn't going to be you know probably not going to be a situation where we return to these highs in the next few days right like you could now if that happened yeah you would lose your position if you got out into stable coins and then just um, automatically pumps and then yeah, yeah you just you just cast yourself look, out with a macro look i i would expect if you come out today the market could it will retrace and come back up next week but what you take off the table you take off the table and you leave for that holiday but you leave for that uh happy that it made it here and let me just sit back and watch it for a little while because in the short run, you may find, oh, today it's green. I wish I would have done it yesterday or tomorrow. But if you look at the direct, the trajectory week after yes. week and month after month, if you're just ch chasing a green day and a red day, you're, you may, one may miss out 
on the bigger, the more macro, larger, long-term opportunity, right? And, That's right. And, and I could be way off base. And I would love to. That's why it's good to leave some in so that if everything just goes moon river, lottery ticket, no, this was it. The whole world mass adopts it and everyone's playing the metaverse video games. And yeah. you know, it's, you still have a play. It's Jubilee. Great. Have a play and just be like, all right, I win. But if not be ready to have, have that safety net to where you are able to watch the value of what you have go way down just as you were able to watch it go up with a smile yeah. on your face and those are the times where yeah if you're if you have if you're able to buy the dip then great buy the dip or you ride that out um and you get engaged we're going to go into so many different ways that's right you can protect yourself compound interest and and really be on top of of when things do skyrocket because whether the corrections come in now or in a week or in a month or in a couple months the the mechanics are still the same and those are the best times to do your research and see the development going on yeah. on those projects that have working teams and buy some stuff on sale creating utility and, and so it's, it's really an exciting time. It shakes out a lot of the, the pump and dumps and the junk that was just there when the market was hot and green. Mm -hmm. You really get to see who are those projects that still have teams that are working hard and active communities that are, that are creating utility developing layers. In fact, bear markets are really instructive because this is when you go to look to see if the development is continuing. It's easy to have to hire a team to push and to have a development happen in the bull market when everybody's flush with cash. But if you see a project in a bear market continuing to, to develop or to continue to have activity, to, to be meeting their uh, roadmap, their goals to have anything really at all happening positive that's a, that's a huge win that's a sign that that protocol is um is going to be there for the you know for through the bear markets through the for the long term i'm just looking at different blockchains so i didn't only look at avalanche while you're saying that solana yeah. has some DAOs that are pumping pretty well right now so while time is correcting on avalanche you have soul invictus doing uh, well doing well and doing its thing on solana and of course, there are different chains have their DAOs. So we've got what's what's Phantom doing? We've got more. We've got more DAO news to update on the reserve DAO currency world. If you're into that and you want to stay abreast of that DeFi, well, a major correction going on there with Hector DAO and Spartacus as well. Mm. Tomb Finance is actually holding up pretty well. And they've been around for a while and have a pretty solid, pretty beautiful ecosystem and, and sweet gig there. So it's nice to see Dude. those that are um, holding up compared to others. But right now, I mean, like we were just saying, when you see Bitcoin and Ethereum correcting, you know, five to 10 percent, you're going to see uh, 10 to 20 percent moves, you know, in, mm -hmm. the, in the altcoin world. Indeed. So, and this is but that doesn't mean that, oh, this is the bottom. This could really just be the beginning or the middle because obviously the top was in the 60,000 range mm -hmm. and we're really not that much further down, right? If you would have said, oh, 60,000 is the top and, and taken there, well, don't, don't not take something off the table just because you're not at the very- At 60, point. right, right, exactly. <laughs> and, and- I would love to be wrong. Leave that amount that's, that you're happy with if you're wrong, but have that amount out that you're able to weather out the storm. And just and I like, think we're going to do a video shortly on where you might want to weather that storm. Some yeah. options, some strategies. Different strategies. It also will not be financial advice, but it'll be multiple ways that you can weather the storm. Just as uh, Central Bank in China says that the market's going to be able to weather the Evergrande crisis, which is officially defaulting and not getting bailed out. So you've got that that hasn't happened to ripple out yet. Right. We haven't, you know, you've got holiday shopping and people having to cash out to pay the bill and other things happening. You've got possible stuff going on with now, you know, 
Markets are rational short run. So all this news and we could just rock it off to new heights and all everything. Yeah, we could be completely wrong about this. And, and that's OK. That's OK. Learn from our mistakes. However, the previous mistakes I, I had was looking at all the excitement and the growth in the markets. Being over optimistic. Not, not looking at the bigger picture and how yeah. into the rest of the world. And not being not taking into the consideration that, you know, things go down. <laughs> right. You know, that's just what markets do. They go up, they go down. Right. And so, when you get when you're accustomed to seeing things go up, you just forget that part. Right. But it's real. And that being said, we hope you appreciate. Uh, that's our basically our trifecta or our perfect storm of different events in our overall market look. It's it's a good time if you've been sitting on the sidelines. It's a great time to get involved in dollar cost averages. They say or get in a little bit at mm-hmm. a time because obviously you're not coming in at the tops of projects. Right. And you can follow those projects that are doing well. We've got a follow-up. No surprise that you're seeing certain NFT and metaverse gaming plays doing well. So like we said, bear markets or, or you know, corrections are great times to see opportunities. So Indeed. sit on the sideline and see the opportunities that are going to be around you know, over a, a, little, a good little while. Should we go into a crypto winter, fall? I mean, it's fall, fall, winter season. Very possible. Yep. But the good thing about that is after the fall comes the spring and the fall is, fall is the kind of lays the groundwork. And if you're, if you're savvy, you've been, you know, you've been storing up, you've been gathering positions on the cheap. So when that spring does come, you're just, you're prepared to, to reap the benefits. And we're going to talk about that coming up in the next video. So you know what to do. If you like to stay on top of all this stuff and have technical walkthroughs, we still have projects individually to take you in and get get behind and unveil, reveal, explore, are, explore starting to really get involved in the Discord world, which is kind of what you need to do, Discord and Twitter to stay yeah. abreast. You can't just do it all on the tube anymore. So, hey, maybe no. one day we'll have, we should have our own Discord channel. Yeah, for sure. Well, put that in the in the world as an idea we'll make that happen yeah until then uh have a beautiful day and namaste